welcome to Nourishing the Mother, where inspired women talk about the journey of motherhood through the common thread of parenting, relationship, and sexuality as a path to consciousness. We ask, in what ways can we show up more fully, live more meaningfully, parent more wholly, and love more unconditionally? How can we mine the wisdom from the experiences of our lives and expand into those challenges? If you are here, you care about paving a path of conscious and intentional motherhood, connected with yourself and your gifts, and also illuminating your children in theirs, so we may raise more whole humans who can impact this world in a more humane way. And if you feel like giving a little back to this free content, please become a patron of the show and receive extra member benefits for less than a coffee a month. Or you can leave a review on iTunes and Facebook, all of which helps the podcast keep going and reach more mamas who need this type of tonic for the soul. Head on over to patreon.com forward slash NTM podcast to find out more. We are Julie Tenner and Bridget Wood, and we are so grateful you're here. Hello, and welcome to Nourishing the Mother. I'm Julie Tenner, and today you are having a delicious session just with me. So Bridgie is away with her family this week, having some beautiful times, I imagine, So you're having a session just with me, which I'm delighted to be able to be with you in your ears. It's very intimate an experience, isn't it? So what? This is weird doing it on my own. Okay, before we jump on, I'd love to remind you to jump onto nourishingthemother.com.au and sign up to join our tribe. Scroll on down to the red banner and once every so often, often it's about once a month at this point in time, we send you off an email with links to everything that we have going on and out in the world at the moment so you can pick and choose where you'd love to dive a little deeper and so you don't miss out on anything that you might be really interested in and that could take your practice a little bit further. So today, today I started and began my five-day course of flowers and honey. So it's five days, five lives, $55 for sexuality and the sexual self. And so I actually thought that would be a beautiful conversation to have in here around why, especially as mothers, your sexuality and sexual self matters. Because I think often what can happen is that we forsake these um, perhaps earlier versions of self or perhaps parts of self that we've never known in order to um, believe that we need to give all of ourselves to the job of parenting with consciousness. Perhaps that job is so big and heavy and exhausting sometimes or most days that you feel as though there's no space left or that sex or intimacy with your partner is another thing on the to-do list. Or um, you just don't feel it anymore and it's not really something you're interested in. You know, so many numbers of stories. But what I want you to know is that your sexuality is very different to the mechanical act of sex. Your sexuality is the energetic experience of your creation energy, the energy of creation and life that flows through your body. And that that is the experience of energy and aliveness and vitality that likely is what you're feeling worn out or disconnected from or... um, just missing. So this is why your sexuality is really important, why it feeds every area of your life. I think the intimacy of parenting is not different to the intimacy 
of relationship. Often the place we stop in one will also be reflective of the place that we stop in the other and that the tools that are learnt in one area of parenting can be applied for relationship and whatever we learn and apply in relationship conversely opens up a practice and an ability to be with our children and an expanded and I don't know deeper um, more regulated space and way because the intimacy ability and level and, and movement of energies are not different in the way that I see it so your sexuality is less about the act of sex and less still about anything to do with him or her and it has everything to do with you your aliveness your state of being the way that you move about in the world how you feel about your body how you love and adore the embodiment of the goddess within you or how you reject her so i want you to know that it's important and I think necessary for you to experience your aliveness by virtue of reconnecting with your sensual aspects. And I think we very much spend a lot of time getting sensuality and sexuality a little bit muddled and um, somehow entangled, but they're two very different experiences. So sex is the mechanical act, sexuality is the energy of life, and sensuality is the experience of using your senses in your human form to amplify your ability to access energy and life energy within your body. So it's a really beautiful experience and it removes any level of connotation around it being about sex or leading to sex or having even anything to do with sex to begin with. That it's the experience, sensuality of connecting you to your aliveness in your body and each one of your senses is a portal in. And the more that you stack together experiences for each of your senses, the greater the power packed opportunity to open energy in your body. And all of a sudden it's when you get to this point that you realize you are in a state and a phase and a practice of embodiment because embodiment is simply forget all of the, you know, huge words and sentences that are tossed around about it is simply the experience of creating, um, well, an experience with consciousness for the purpose of eliciting more energy from your body. And guess what? It's what sensuality does. And it's connected to your sexuality because it's a pathway into your life force, into your life energy. And as a feminine being, you have this beautiful tap root of a, you know, I don't know, tree roots or branches or whatever you want to think about it in terms of, or just this innate ability to move and receive energy through your body and then amplify it with your senses, amplifying that energy and that life force and send it out from your body. You're like kind of a crystal. The ability to absorb energy and transmit energy is what this human incarnation of the feminine goddess does. And that's how it's, that's how I see it as being the blessing. This is why we worship at the altar of the goddess or the feminine in all of her forms and embodiments, because it's a blessing to feel. It's a movement of energy that is a blessing and that can transform a space, a person, a moment in time every time. So you can choose to bless a space at 5% or you can choose to bless a space at 200%. And all it is, is energy. And it's just about learning how to receive that and how to feel that and move it through this beautiful body that you have that's designed like, like a beautiful guitar to have a string plucked in feeling or sensuality and have it vibrate through this body. So the sound of that amplifies and sends out music that has healing waves for whoever and whatever around you. This is how it heals and can be used in parenting as much as in relationship, you know, as much as I think in healing the world. I think it's a very radical act to reclaim your creative power and your sensuality for the purpose of embodying and worshipping the goddess within you. I just don't think there could be 
a more radical feminist act. I really, I really don't. So when I think about women and mothers in reclaiming their sexuality, I think what can happen in motherhood, and I know I certainly lived it, was I never really learnt what a true expression of the feminine was from the inside. And so I spent a lifetime rejecting the feminine and living very much in my well-cultivated masculine because the feminine was too much. She was crazy. She was violent. Um, She came with a body that um, the world told me was too much or not enough was pain. I didn't know how to meet, honour or be with her power. So easier to reject her. I know, so many stories. You know, so many stories. Um, Where was I going with that? (laughs) I can't even remember now. I went off on my own little memory bubble. Um, I guess I remember. So I spent a lifetime rejecting the truth of what the feminine embodiment and essence is. And what happens with that then at some point is you're so exhausted and depleted and so um, starving for a sense of energy, connection and love flow. So energy is felt as love and seen as light. It's all the same thing, really, just different ways of talking about it. And so at some point you realize that's deeply missing and that that is a deep and core part of who you are and how lit up you feel in your life. And the moment you look outside of yourself, what do you see? What do you see? What are the, what are the embodiments of the feminine that you see? Likely for most of us, it's porn. It might be billboards and um, marketing strategies. It might be the women around us who themselves reject their own feminine. And so we get this very shallow version of what the true feminine is. And so we believe that in order to experience just a little bit of that love flow that we're starving for and that we deeply crave to be seen and known and loved and felt and connected with, is we will continue to reject our feminine. So it's one layer where we'll continue to hold on to our masculine as being the way that we're supposed to be or the way that that guarantees our safety. It's another layer. And then we will slap on or plaster cast on just a little bit of feminine shine. So not feminine shine that's deeply rejuvenative, not feminine shine that's deeply nourishing and, and can transform the lives and the experiences and the vitality of the people around us, just like a plaster cast superficial form of maybe a bit of external feminine radiance maybe a bit of, you know, makeup or hair or boobs or clothes that that sort of perk up the front surface, though the inside may be still a relatively barren land, a dead landscape. We can pretty up the outside. So true feminine essence really is the light that's felt within and is continues to shine and amplify as it moves outwards. So we might decide that you know, that's what we're doing. And we receive just enough uh, love flow that we go, oh, well, this is, you know, this is what I have to be. We never really learn what the feminine is in her true embodiment that's here to be worshipped and is deeply nourishing like a life spring, like a dip in the life elixir. Like it, it, it is the golden chalice, you know, it, it, <laughs> It is so much of of so many fables that we've sought for this life source that has become so rare in our current life because of how um, shut down, suppressed and rejected the feminine is. And that doesn't just come from the patriarchy. So we continue to live probably like this until at some point perhaps our external shine becomes dangerous for us or we're taught that we need to cloak it. Or we decide that in order to be known and loved for our mind and our heart, so a layer deeper, we must give up on the surface shine or structure in order to be met by and for and with someone and with ourselves at a deeper level. So I certainly know that that can be the story that we carry in motherhood, that in order to... um, 
be of service with great heart and mind in order to be known or loved with great heart and mind that we must reject the surface feminine china radiance because it's somehow superficial or ridiculous or a waste of our time or um, in the way of someone seeing us for who we really are but i always think that's one of the greatest tragedies is that we would give up the goddess embodiment that we're given in this lifetime to express and nourish and nurture her with a capital H through this vessel. But I certainly know, particularly in my early days of parenthood, that I completely gave up on um, my external at all because I, I felt it to be completely irrelevant given the depth that I was seeking within myself and seeking within relationships around me and seeking within my life purpose. It felt like a mm, not even necessary, though I would cringe and feel a little bit um, shamey and awkward around experiences of beauty or opulence because I was rejecting it within myself. I would reject it outside of me also. And so you end up at a space where you don't feel beautiful anymore. You don't know how to love or connect with this body on your own and perhaps instead then form sentences around that you're not attractive or that you're not desirable or that you're not desired or desirous, that you then look for evidence or research around um, research. We tend to research it, don't we? We look for the stacking of our beliefs to be confirmed outside of us when, in fact, it's all story. It's all story. We can be loved for our insides and we can still continue to love the incarnation that we have also. And so we run these stories that in order to be the mother that I want to be, desire to be, am, identify as. She comes with these sets of sacrifices. She doesn't do these type of things. She's not this type of woman. And every part that we've rejected previously in our life that we felt scarred by, that we reject within our own mothers or experiences around us, we tend to kind of all put into this one sense of identity. But what I would love to do um, with you and with women is create far less of this separation and far more I would love to blur the lines with you I'd love for you to blur your lines around I'm mother here and therefore I am absent of sexual energy it's just life energy and I'm sex siren over here but it requires this very set set of circumstances or I'm not it at all and I would rather that you realized you always are and always can be and it's simply your reclaiming of your own power and ability to meet that that's sitting there waiting for you to reclaim to hold to remember to wipe away the debris that's covering over that truth for you I would rather that you knew you were an energetic being who is and was life force, who continues to be the beacon of life energy in her family and whose responsibility in this lifetime as a feminine being is to move life force and life energy through this world so that it's healing and there's nothing we need more now than the pulsing of feminine energy. And that begins with you and your very radical reclamation of your sexual essence, which is not separate to your mothering essence. It is not at the expense of, um, I don't know, whatever you've decided in your mind. It's You don't need to be a particular way in order to experience your sexuality. In fact, I would say it would be beautiful to play the entire spectrum of who you are so that it's always available to you and you can incarnate any form of energy rather than I'm only allowed to play the middle C in an entire keyboard. Or I've got a rainbow and I I, I stop at yellow, you know, like... Oh, God, I want you to be a rainbow. (laughs) So the ability to move energy through your body is a power and a strength in your relationship. But first and foremost, it's here for you to light you on fire, 
to be what you love about you, to reclaim the energy and the life purpose and the beacon of energy that you are. The bonus is it happens to create ecstatic relationships and, um, you know, delicious sexual experiences, and it can be one of the best tools that you have in your parenting. They're not separate. Your ability to love your body and amplify your sense of energy and life force by doing the things that you love and reclaiming pleasure in your body. Who cares if you want to put on this shade of lipstick or not? Just because it feels good and it lights, makes you shine a little brighter. Shining a little brighter, right? Light makes your light a little more luminous. That's energy. Or you decide that you're going to wear this skirt because you save it for special occasions. And what am I saving it for? Because today is a special occasion because I'm alive and I'm in love. I have love around me. I have love in me. And I can move love through me. And I'm going to celebrate that. So today I'm going to celebrate that through the expression of this skirt that reminds me of that truth and I send that energy out into the world. Or today I'm going to play music that delights my soul and breaks my heart open and makes my hips sway. Or today I'm going to sit down with my kids and relish this delicious meal. Women, mothers often starve themselves. I can't tell you how many times I say to women, feed yourself. You actually have to feed yourself, not the scraps left over. Feed yourself, feed yourself first, feed yourself with your children. You know, it was one of my affirmations this year was that I consciously created the ritual of feeding myself lunch because often I'd run through my day squeezing every last second of doing out of it and I'd get to school, pick up, starving, depleted, realizing I hadn't eaten all day. Oh, you actually have to feed yourself, but use sensuality to really embody and enjoy this experience and it becomes one that lights you up. So I want you to create experiences where you blur the lines and you realize how you are a being of energetic mastery. Yes, you are. And realize just by spending a little longer absorbing this delicious moment of the sunlight on your child's hair or the giggle that you hear as they play with their sibling outside or the moment that they leave you consciously and drift into sleep or the glance from your partner in the morning or the feeling of delight as the glass meets your fingertips and the cool water moves down your throat Or just the dazzle of the sunlight as it brushes, you know, a beautiful flower with its petals open and you just enjoy receiving that color. Like just use your senses to reclaim your sensuality and let it guide your energy and then do the really radical thing of sending that energy outside of yourself and letting it be seen or felt or experienced by someone outside of you because that is your goddess incarnation healing in this moment. Wouldn't that be divine if that's how we walked around this world? I wonder how different the world would be. So your sexuality is important because it's your life force. It doesn't mean anything else so start to untease those things you have tangled i'd love to hear about it and it's not too late if you'd love to join flowers and honey it's running every day this week you can catch the replays or you can join me live they're all scheduled in the group it's only 55 dollars for the five days And you can have an energetic container to plug into and a wellspring of wisdom on which to springboard forward from. So you can find out more about that at thepleasurenutritionist.com or The Pleasure Nutritionist on Facebook and Instagram. 
I really hope today has delighted your heart or your body or your soul in some way and there's a ring of truth and if there is I would love to hear it I would love for you to share it because the sharing of your truth I guarantee you will light other women up the moment they see that comment they'll remember that inside themselves so please let us know on Facebook or Instagram or by email And if there is a podcast topic that you would love us to delve into or a question that you would love us to open up, then please get in contact with us. Please email us, please DM or PM us. Um, Please comment on a post, anything. We would love to hear from you. We really do want this space to be one that is um, a beautiful, energetic pocket that you can tap into and gain deeper wisdom and insight to apply into your world. And if you're ready to do that on the weekly, then jump into Soul Driven Motherhood. That's now our weekly workshop transformative space in which we take the tools that we talk about on the podcast and we very beautifully move you through one focus point, one tool, one process at a time, one per week, one workshop, one tool, one moment, one practice more deeply ingrained. So Soul Driven Motherhood is your place for weekly workshops with both Bridget and I and the many guests that we have in there. You can find out more about that at nourishingthemother.com.au, Nourishing the Mother on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you so much for spending your beautiful time with me and I look forward to seeing you another week or online or hopefully in Flowers and Honey with me. And remember to nourish the woman to rock the family. And we'll see you next week when we continue to peel back the layers on your mothering journey. And if you want to support Nourishing the Mother and all the late nights, the early mornings, the blood, sweat and tears we pour into our art, then please go to patreon.com forward slash NTM podcast and become our patron. As a patron, you're helping all of the cost of operating this podcast, the hosting, the editing, the transcription, helping all of that be completely covered and joining a community who are all about honoring our journeys and continuing to open. The more support we have, the longer we can last. So become a patron. We'd love to have you. Go to patreon.com forward slash NTM podcast. We literally couldn't do this without you. Thank you so much for listening and please share this podcast with anyone you think it would be medicine for. This has been a production of thewellnesscouch.com. Check us out on Facebook and join in the conversation on facebook.com forward slash thewellnesscouch. Subscribe to each show on iTunes and check us out on Twitter. The Wellness Couch, streaming wellness into your lives. Whilst the Wellness Couch presenter endeavor to provide accurate and helpful information to their listeners, these podcasts cannot take into account individual circumstances and are not intended to be a substitute for health and medical advice from a qualified health professional. You should always seek the advice of a qualified health professional before acting on any of the information provided by any of the Wellness Couch podcasts.